Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and his Liberal Party are really taking this new foreign interference scandal on the chin. I think they assumed by starting up this NISACOP committee to study foreign interference that there might be some findings of Liberal MPs or Senators who were involved with foreign governments that the Liberals could then expel and pretend that they had solved all the problems. But I don't even think Justin Trudeau expected the sheer scale of how many Liberal MPs and Senators might be involved with foreign governments. I think he just assumed that maybe they'll find something out about Handong and they'll prevent him from rejoining caucus, or Majo Jahar will be seen to be involved with the Iranian regime and then they can kick him out. But it looks like it could implicate dozens of liberal MPs. And this has been a absolute worst case scenario media firestorm for the liberals, setting up opposition MPs for great attacks on the liberals that they have no equivalent scandals to swing back at. That's kind of been the story with the liberals the entire time. Usually what governments will do when they are caught in a bad scenario, they are caught with their hand in the cookie jar, is that at very least they can find somebody from another party in the past who has done something similar. The problem in Canada right now is the liberals are setting new precedents for how corrupt you can be so that they can't point and say, well, a conservative did it too. Well, an NDP MP did it too because nobody's done stuff like they've done before. And now I want to jump you over to this amazing clip of former Liberal MP Kevin Vong, now sitting as an independent, going after Justin Trudeau's government for basically kowtowing to what uh, Vong calls Ch uh, Justin Trudeau's Beijing masters. I think this is a great clip, and this man, Kevin, does deserve to join the Conservative caucus. He's been great on foreign interference issues. The Honourable Member from Spadina, Fort York. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister once said that he thought Ensikov was well-suited to examine foreign interference in Canada's democracy and democratic institutions. But apparently, not anymore. Why the change? Was it an ENSICOP report that shed some redacted light on the willing involvement of Liberals guilty of seeking political and financial benefit? Does the Prime Minister still feel that, quote, Canadians need to have faith in their institutions and deserve answers and transparency, end quote? Or has his party's Beijing masters called for a reversal? <laughs> And this is, a, this is a great point for him to be making because Trudeau was the one who called for the ENSICOP committee to be made in the first place with some pressure, obviously, from the Conservatives and the NDP, but he thought he could get this thing to go away. And now it's obviously finding far more people implicated than he assumed. And now this response from the Liberals really proves just how in the corner they are because now they're going to say, well, at least we made the committee in the first place. That's unprecedented for a government to do. Well, it's unprecedented to need the investigation in the first place, but here is a liberal hack to respond to this question instead of the Prime Minister himself. The Honourable Minister for Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, our colleague should be careful before he simply makes yeah. up stuff in question yeah, period definitely. and asserts things that he knows are absolutely false. He knows very well, Mr. Speaker, that our government created for the first time ever a committee of parliamentarians to oversee the work of our security agencies. We think it's important for parliament. That, that, no, it, it was. it's only because it was needed because of what you guys were doing. That's like saying we're the first ones to institute a committee to oversee the illicit drug use of members of parliament. It's like, well, why do you need that now? It's almost like a new problem arose that you guys had to pretend to be tackling and now you're regretting it. Parliamentarians from every political party and the other place to do this important work. We've acted on their recommendations. We thank them for this important contribution to the fight against foreign interference and to a series of other measures important for assuring the national security of all Canadians. Yeah, an absolute limp response. They have nothing. They didn't touch on anything Kevin had said. And Kevin himself is a victim, in my opinion, of foreign interference. So he was the liberal candidate for the riding of Toronto Spadina Fort York. I don't, you know, I don't hit him for the fact that he ran as a liberal. You're in the most downtown riding ever. So if you're going to run for a party, I'd rather an anti-communist try and sneak in through a liberal riding as a liberal MP. But it seems like what happened in the background is liberal MP Handong, the MP for, uh, for Danforth North, he right now sits as, or like Don Valley North, sorry, 
he right now sits in as, a, as an independent because his connections with the Chinese government were so clear. He was talking with the Chinese embassy or Chinese ambassadors in order to negotiate not releasing the two Michaels from custody in China too early. It was completely nuts what kind of stuff he was obviously engaged in. And it looks like the report has found even more out about him. That's why Jagmeet Singh, after having read some of the report, basically said soon after his comments about the report, he kind of made a slight comment about how Handong probably shouldn't be let back in the Liberal caucus. But Kevin Vong occupies the federal seat that is over top of the old provincial parliament seat that Handong used to be in. He was a provincial liberal who then lost his re-election bid, I believe, in 2014 or so. Uh, but the election before Doug Ford, or I think it was right when Doug Ford came in, he lost his seat. And then Han Dong needed to find a new riding to, to run in. But Adam Vaughn had, was the MP for Spadina for York at the time. So then Han Dong went up to Don Valley North, where there was another Chinese liberal MP occupying the riding. His name was Gang Tan. And they had an open nomination to see who was going to become the MP for that area. Gang Tan had to run in a nomination to get renominated. But somehow in the middle of that nomination, there was a fake sexual assault or fake sex scandal launched against Gang Ten that embarrassed him, that forced him to drop out. Gang Ten famously was actually born in mainland China, but had moved obviously to Canada and become an MP. He was actually decently pro-Taiwan and was willing to go on Taiwanese diplomatic trips until people like uh, gang, um, people like uh, Han Dong and his other friend Michael Cheng had basically threatened Han Dong or Gang Tan into not going. The names get a bit confusing for me. So Gang Tan was threatened to not go on this Taiwan trip by Han Dong and Michael Chen, and then they somehow had launched. I'm assuming it was them, just based on the convenience of it, a fake sex scandal to get Gang Tan out of the nomination so Han Dong could win it. And then Kevin Vong, when Adam Vaughn leaves the riding of Spadina, Fort York. Sorry, so many of the names are very similar. Because it was on short notice that Adam said, I'm not running again, they made Kevin Vong the appointed candidate for Spadina, Fort York. And then, because this is Han Dong's old stomping ground, well, somehow there was a random sex scandal also launched against Kevin a week before the federal election that prompted Justin Trudeau to come out and say that he will never sit as a liberal MP in an attempt to keep Kevin from being able to win his election. It was too late to remove him as the liberal candidate, so he barely still won. But it's odd how in this area that used to be Han Dong's old stomping ground, that fake sex scandals were used both against Kevin Kevin Vong and Gang Ten in order to get them out of the way. Obviously, Kevin was probably targeted because somebody found out that he is a lifelong anti-communist, his parent, one of his parents is from South Vietnam and his other parents, a parent is Chinese and they're all very anti-communist. And so they probably didn't want a potential whistleblower accidentally getting into the liberal government and being able to point out Chinese government connections that many of the MPs had. We've had this in other cases where liberal MPs who were Sikh started calling out all of the pro khalistani cabinet ministers and other MPs and was kicked out of caucus. And it seems like from the Chinese side of things, the same thing to happen to Kevin Vaughn. They didn't want a man who was an anti-communist being in the government and poking around, just as they didn't want an anti khalistani in the government poking around and finding corrupt connections on that front. And so hopefully this hasn't been too rambling of an explanation, but this is also why I think Kevin Vaughn should be re-added to the conservative caucus, or I guess cross the floor into the conservative caucus. He is a strong anti-communist, he can win ridings in downtown Toronto. No other conservative could probably win. And I think it would be rewarding Chinese interference to prevent Kevin Vong from being able to run in a competent party and be able to win a re-election. People like him need to be around. And I think this clip today proves why. He is a dog with a bone on this issue. And we no need more people to be aggressively anti-foreign interference in the parliament, not just using it as an issue to thrash the liberals with, but take on the issue in a serious manner in order to make the country safer in the long run. Anyways, 
That should be it for me today, guys. You can donate to my Give, Send, Go campaign in the description below. We have a legal fund. We're fighting this billionaire Chinese developer in court for defamation. He hasn't actually shown any evidence that we defamed him for more than two and a half years, but he's just dragging this thing out. And then also, if you guys want to be on my organizing list for nominations and other races around the country, you can go to my website in the description below, wyattclaypool.com. I will have people's addresses so I can figure out where people are in the country. And if I know of any interesting races in your area, I can specifically email you to let you know about good candidates in your area, no matter what level of government it is. Maybe I don't end up basically never emailing you and because I just never find anything specifically I need to recommend to you in your area. Maybe I email you quite a bit because you're in an area with a lot of close battles that I'm interested in. But that's something that if you're interested, you can sign up for that and it kind of allows this show to not just be a show, but be an organizing force in Canadian politics. Anyways, that should be it for me today, guys. Have a good one.